So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to play a video by, um, I think he's a well-known speaker, um, I think he's American. Um, his name is uh, Mike Bickle and he has um, put out this uh, video talking about divorce and remarriage and I wanted to uh, give my opinion on uh, what he thinks based on what I can see the Bible says. So I thought I'd play the video and um, give my opinion alongside it. It's the first time I've tried this and I'm not sure. I hopefully, like with these things, making videos, you get better as time goes along. So hopefully I'll improve, uh, but I think you get the gist of it. So uh, here we go. I want to talk about the very important subject of divorce and remarriage. And we know that marriage is under a major assault from the powers of darkness. That's I don't need to give you all the stats. So many groups are doing that. But the enemy wants to create confusion and uh, to obscure the truth. And some people take uh, go too far and some come up too short. And if we go too far, quote, if our standards are too high, that's not really the so no, we, we don't want high standards is what he's saying. We don't want high standards. That's going too far. That's what he's saying, basically. I believe that's what he's actually saying about people who believe in the permanence of marriage. We'll have to keep watching the video to see. Right way to say it, but I think you understand what I mean. If, if we have a strictness about this, that the Bible does speak situations. So basically he's saying that we can't be strict about divorce and remarriage because the Bible doesn't do that. The Bible's not strict. The Bible, um, it, it, you know, leaves the interpretation open to anyone to interpret any way that suits them. And there's a thousand unique situations that we can't find a perfect application of the principle. The vast majority of dream opinion because... Yes, yes, there's always an application for every situation. Do you think God would inspire the Bible so that we, for us... So that we could be confused, so that we couldn't see things clearly on this such an important subject as divorce and remarriage, which he said it's very important. It's a very important subject. Do you think God would write the Bible in such a way as to confuse us all, so we don't know what's right or wrong, and we don't know what we should do in any situ any given situation? Of course, God wouldn't do that. Because I believe the scripture's straightforward on the three or four key principles. The difficulty comes in the application of the unique situations. That's the Holy Spirit. No, there's no difficulty in any application. You can give me any situation, marital situation, divorce, separation, any situation um, on uh, pertaining to divorce and remarriage, and I could give you an application easily, straight away from the Bible. For wisdom. Again, most of the time, the wisdom is straightforward. It's clear. All percent. It's very unique, but that small percent, again, is thousands of situations. Paragraph B, the scripture, the emphasis of scripture is on the positive, the sanctity of marriage. The main burden... Of I don't agree with that. There are many passages in the Old and New Testament that speak negatively about the implications if you divorce and remarry. Very clearly, Jesus and Paul call divorce and remarriage adultery that's pretty negative isn't it that's pretty that's to put you off divorcing and remarrying not according to mike it's all positive everything the bible says about marriage the burden of scripture isn't to tell us what not to do abstain from divorce in these situations the burden of scripture no scripture just tells us that it's adultery if you divorce and remarry clearly that's what scripture tells us is not telling us what to abstain from but rather painting the picture of the glory of what we're called to which is the sanctity of marriage paragraph b therefore divorce and remarriage it's very limited because of the sanctity of marriage very limited there's only two biblical reasons that are, that's clearly laid out in the bible for divorce and again this is the mainstream view of the body of christ uh, that I know of around the world. So he's really trying to emphasise that this is the mainstream view, i.e. the only view, the right view, because so many people believe in it. He's definitely trying to make sure that no one in that building gets to think that marriage might be permanent. The first one being adultery. And Notice the first one being adultery. He doesn't even talk about the verse where 
adultery is allegedly mentioned he doesn't go into detail he does do no bible study doesn't look at the word doesn't look at the application doesn't look at the fact that joseph and mary were considered married even even though they're betrothed he doesn't do any bible study at all i was shocked considering he's the, a very famous well-known man of god and he's supposed to have like the wisdom of age or you know all the stuff he's learned in his life he doesn't do any bible study on that word at all I want you faithful to put this foundation in the lives of these young people. We want them, to, the Lord wants them to understand the sanctity of marriage. Maybe they did not see it in their home. Maybe so he wants young people to understand the sanctity of marriage where he's just going to blow marriage apart. He's just going to blow it totally. All he's going to say in this video is that you can get divorced and remarried and nobody cares. And God doesn't care. Maybe it's a new idea. They've never heard it in their church. But the Lord wants us to impart this so they have clarity and they have zeal about it. And some people... Clarity? How can you say that when you're just basically going to say that you can get divorced and remarried for any reason when it comes down to it? That's what he's going to say. And yet he's saying... It's very clever, actually. The more I watch it, the more I can see what he's doing. He's making sure that we, number one, believe that we're, we've got to be of the devil if we believe you can't get divorced and remarried and it's okay with God. And number two, we are we have clarity if we believe what he says. And if we don't believe what he says, then we don't have clarity. He's very he's a very good speaker because he can really twist your head to believe that what he's saying is what the Bible says, when it clearly isn't. It's quite scary, actually. Now, the people that have gone through a divorce... And they've been remarried. That is not a time for everybody to have an opinion about what they could have, should have, or you would have done. That's not a good time to bring, to insert our opinions. It's a time, again, for grace. It's a time for mercy. It's a time for tenderness. It's a time for sensitivity. Uh, I cannot stress that. So sensitivity and tenderness towards the people who've got divorced and remarried. What about the abandoned spouse who doesn't want to lose her husband? So you're saying that a man can commit adultery, go and get remarried. The woman's at home with the kids who he's abandoned and not even paying any child maintenance. But these couple turn up in your church who are divorced and remarried and you've got to show them tenderness and kindness and forgiveness and compassion without... I'm guaranteeing you that he is not saying that you should find out about that ex-spouse. You should find out how they are. They're sat at home having stood by their vows and the church is supporting their husband in an adulterous marriage just makes me so <laughs> righteous anger. I feel righteous anger listening to him speaking like this. What about these verses? I'll just read some of these verses. Romans 7 verses 2 to 3. For the woman which has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if he be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband is alive, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband is dead, she is free from that law. So she is not an adulteress, though she be married to another man. And by implication, if she's an adulteress, he obviously also is an adulterer, the man that she's left. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 10 to 11. And unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband, but if she departs, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled. So by implication, the husband needs to stay single. Yeah, so stay single or reconcile. The husband also will need to stay single because otherwise how can she reconcile with him? So it's very clear, all the Bible verses, we'll read Mark 10, verse 11 to 12. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. So it's very clear that remarriage is adultery. He totally ignores this. We don't even get a Bible study on the verse in Matthew 19, 9 and 5, 32 which says you can divorce for fornication, which is very clearly fornication in the betrothal period, which the Jews would have understood because he was talking, Matthew was talking to the Jews. Once the marriage has actually been, uh, once the marriage has actually, the, you've gone, actually gone through the ceremony, there's no, there's no backing out. Once you become one flesh, you go through the marriage ceremony, you leave and cleave. Once that's happened, that's it. Marriage is for life and the Bible is clear on this. That though on one hand we want to hold the standard, but on the other hand we want to do it in a spirit of meekness and a spirit of tenderness. Not because some no people idea, they get He's these doing. principles down and they get into that know-it-all spirit and they. 
right, so he's basically saying i've got a know-it-all spirit because i am reading these bible verses out which are very clear that remarriage is adultery but people like me who stand for marriage permanence he's saying i've got a know-it-all spirit he doesn't even know me and i am standing for the truth of what scripture says he wants the easy way out he is a multi-millionaire christian speaker do you think for a moment he's gonna stand up there and say that marriage is permanent he'd lose his job basically and his millions or millions of pounds house whatever he's got and his lifestyle but he, his luxurious lifestyle he would lose all that if he stood up and said that marriage was permanent of course he's not going to do that well i don't love her anymore and i says hey, i'm sad about that but i i tell you one thing god so honors the marriage covenant that if you will lean into it he so honors the marriage covenant you're telling us God doesn't. You're telling us God allows you just to break it for adultery or basically desertion. Almost, you may as well say for any reason, if you're going to go down that path. Because anyone who wants out of a marriage, all they need to do is desert their spouse or commit adultery. End of marriage. So he's at the beginning, he said that, it, that he wanted to like clear up the confusion. I'm so confused as a person watching this who doesn't understand about the permanent marriage. I, permanent marriage. I am now so confused as to what if any reasons there are, what reasons there are, when when, when you can act on these reasons, when you can't. It, he is so confusing. This is just so confusing. With humility and servanthood, the Spirit of God is bigger than your dull emotions. Your dull emotions that would be can be ignited. If, if he was telling us that marriage is permanent, because exactly this, the Spirit of God is bigger than our emotions. Now, our emotions say that we want to get remarried. But the spirit, the, the spirit of God through the Bible tells us that no, we're called to stay single or reconcile. Very clearly, the Bible says that. And there's no grounds for divorce and remarriage. The Bible does not say you can get divorced and remarriage if your husband or wife has committed adultery or abandoned you. It doesn't say that. It says if you're abandoned that you're called to peace, not that you're called to get, not that you're able to remarry. What is wrong with singleness? Paul was single. Lots of the Bible famous people in the bible were single you know you yes it seems difficult because by worldly standards we all want to be married don't we but you've got to walk this walk for a while and then you realize actually it's an incredible blessing to be called to be single and celibate after divorce the blessings are, are, are abundant absolutely mind-blowing and yet he's cutting everyone off from that he's saying basically he he thinks He's saying that we don't want to go on emotions, but what he's really saying is that we do because our emotions say we don't want to live on our own. But that's what the world says, Mike, not what the not what the Bible says, and not what Jesus says. Jesus say, lay, Jesus says, lay down your life, pick up your cross and follow me. This is not about what we want. This is about what the Bible says. This is about not about how we feel. Our feelings always need to line up with the word of God. But what he's saying is basically it's easy believism which I guess I shouldn't have expected anything more from someone like him. He's got a lot to lose if he tells us the truth about what the Bible says. Well, I think it's amazing that God connects the way men treat women to the prayer movement. Now, we're in the generation where we believe the prayer movement is exploding worldwide. I assure you this, the honor of the covenant, the sanctity of marriage, will go on like railroad tracks. They, those tracks will run together. The explosion of the prayer movement and the sanctity of marriage. Thousand. That's where I completely disagree with him because he's basically saying that the prayer movement in the church is going to explode if we support divorce and remarriage if we say that it's okay to break up marriages and okay to remarry. No, look at the state of the church. Look at the state of the, the institutional church. Look at the state of the visible church, you know. It is a mess. It's accepting, because it accepted divorce and remarriage, it's now accepting gay marriage. I have no idea how much deeper the church is going to fall in what it, in morality it allows in its doors. But absolutely this proves to me why we're not the church is not as it should be a holy and spotless bride because we are allowing divorce and remarriage for any reason and you can divorce you can commit adultery divorce your wife leave your children abandon them pay nothing towards them leave your wife broken-hearted and penniless marry your adulterous wife your adulterous partner move state move move county because i'm in the uk 
go to a new church and everyone's going to love you and they're probably you can even work your way into a position of leadership how is that right is it no wonder that the church church attendance is, is sliding is it no wonder because your average every, average everyday person in the street knows that marriage is permanent it's just something we all know deep down inside now the lord talks about we'll get in a minute which you already are obviously already know in the case of adultery then there's the lord says i allow you to where nowhere in the bible does it say you can get divorced for adultery mike nowhere i don't think that he did much bible study before he did this talk he was probably busy traveling or something because it's really clear when you look at matthew 5 32 and 19 9 and i'll put it below that the word used here that you can get divorced for is not adultery the word is porneia and that does not mean adultery that means fornication that is sex between single people people who are not formally married I don't even think he really took much time to plan this speech, talk. Now, last thing I'm going to say here at the end of paragraph C, I just mentioned the last sentence here. When it says God hates divorce, he hates it. Now, here's the wrong application of this. Here's the wrong application. You know, the, the gal, she's been married. The guy's been out committing adultery. The marriage is destroyed. She has the biblical uh, allowance for divorce really bad this is just so bad basically he's encouraging you to divorce if your partner's committed adultery i understand that it's difficult if your partner's committed adultery and bringing disease into the home and he's doing it and he's not willing to change adultery does not give you permission to divorce the bible says to that wife stay single or reconcile so she would need to stay single and still honour the marriage covenant. It doesn't get broken by adultery. Basically what he's saying is adultery breaks a marriage covenant. If that's the case, what is, what is, there's so many people who, there is adultery in the marriage and they're reconciled, but they're not married anymore. They have to go retake their vows, have another ceremony, come back before God. They're not one flesh anymore. Adultery violates the marriage covenant. It, it doesn't break it. Not according to Jesus and Paul. The other thing I wanted to say is marriage is a reflection of the church. So this is a, is it Ephesians 5 verses 25 to 33. So Ephesians 5, 25 onwards. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy cleansing and cleans, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present, him, present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. So basically... Paul is saying that the marriage relationship on earth reflects Jesus' relationship with his church. Now, many times in the Bible, the church turns away. In the Old Testament, Israel turned away from God. Many times the church turns away. Jesus is not going to say, okay, see your church and go and get another one. He's not going to do that. He waits. Exactly what we need to do if our marriage hits the rocks or we need to separate for a while. We wait. Because the covenant isn't broken, just like Jesus' covenant is never going to be broken with the church, whatever the church does, and however the church turns its back on Jesus, he is never going to turn his back on the church. And that is exactly how it is in human marriage. No matter what happens, we should never turn our back on our marriage covenant. We should never turn our back on our spouse, whatever they've done. Yes, there may be times we need to leave, live away from them for a while if they're mistreating us or they're you know, committing adultery over and over again. I understand that. But we should always be looking to, for reconciliation, no matter how long. And even if we can't reconcile ever, then we leave, we stay single. We stay single because that's what Jesus says. That's what the Bible says. Stay single or reconcile. So thanks for watching. So as you can see, he started off at the beginning saying that he wants to bring uh, clarity and uh, get rid of all the confusion surrounding um, divorce and remarriage. But by the end of the video... I think anyone who didn't understand about the permanence of marriage and hadn't studied the Bible for themselves would be far more confused than they were at the beginning because basically <laughs> at the end of the video what he's saying is you can get divorced and remarried for adultery or desertion and basically once you say you can get divorced and remarried for a reason that opens the floodgates for, for, for it to become any reason because if that's what you believe about divorce and remarriage you believe that it's a, a covenant that can be broken. Essentially, that's what you're saying. If adultery and desert or desertion breaks the covenant, 
ultimately what you believe is that the covenant can be broken and once you believe that it opens the door to anything to, for, for any reason basically which is completely not what Jesus and Paul will say in the New Testament and that is not what God created marriage to be when he created it he said the two will become one flesh and don't let man separate what God has joined together do you think God is going to unjoin a covenant marriage just because a man might leave his wife or you know mankind in general might separate the couple for whatever reason that joining that God does he's not going to unjoin them no matter what until one of them dies so I think that the, this video is just making things making making the situation even more confusing if you're watching it to try and find out to try and get some clarity because you're confused you're not going to come away knowing any better